Welcome to Chai with Manju. Our special guest today is the chair of Department of Physics at Harvard University. He's also one of the most well-known experts in the condensed matter theory. He recently received Dirac Medal, which is considered one of the most prestigious awards in the world of theoretical physics. Let us welcome Sabir Sachdev. Hello and welcome. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming to the show. Glad <laughs> to be here. Okay. So, uh, you truly and uh, a parent's dream, and especially Indian parents, with your both your academic academics as well as career with IIT, MIT, uh, stint at Yale, and now at Harvard. Uh, <laughs> you started yeah, I've been your lucky. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and hardworking. So you started. You you were born in Delhi. You started your life in Delhi, and then uh, mm -hmm. moved to Bangalore where you had your early education. Now, your family is also very heavily science-based family, right? Tell us more about them. <laughs> well, my father is a electrical engineer, okay. and he worked for the Indian telephone okay. company in okay. Bangalore. Uh -huh. And then he moved to the U.S., and he worked for a company called Intelsat, okay. which uh, does satellite communications and okay. phone calls and uh -huh. TV signals. And, okay. and he's still involved in that area. Okay. And uh, my brother is an engineer who works for Colgate in okay. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister got a degree in biology, and she lives in Toronto. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, you know, I was always interested in science from a young age. And I read somewhere that you were a very good student, an annoyingly good student. <laughs> what is the story behind that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, I guess uh, high school in India can be very competitive and yes. uh, we, we think we're competing with, against each other, but right. not really. But uh -huh. uh, but I know I'm very good friends with my, course, with my course. classmates from high school. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, um, I remember in those days, um, dating myself, the joint uh, entrance exam was very big. And you actually came second, right, for engineering. What was that like? And then you got an IIT right away, right, and skipped your 12th grade. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> so I gave the exam after 11th. Mm -hmm. You had the option of doing that. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, I got in and uh, and then I joined IIT in Delhi. And okay. uh, that was a fun time. I learned lots of interesting things. But after a year, we moved to the U.S. Okay. <laughs> and MIT came calling, right? <laughs> well, I applied to MIT. <laughs> of course, it, okay. you know, it seemed like an incredible dream to be able to come to MIT at that time. Right, right. That was in 1979. That's correct, okay. yes. <laughs> and uh, in MIT also, again, you did the accelerated program and you got a degree in two and a half years? Yes, I switched to physics after okay. coming to MIT because uh, mm -hmm. I was working in the lab of uh, Professor Kleppner. Right, and. Uh, right and really enjoyed that very much. Okay. And also in my MIT days, I lived in a fraternity, believe yeah. it or not, <laughs> which is still there in, uh, in, on Commonwealth Avenue in okay. downtown Boston. Okay. And uh, I made a lot of good friends. And <laughs> you wrote a very exciting paper in those days. You know, share with us viewers about that. Oh, uh, you mean my undergraduate yes. thesis? Yes. <laughs> well, I was working in the lab, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, but I was not good at it. In fact, uh, <laughs> almost anything I touched uh -huh. used to break down. <laughs> so my advisor Jumpy, said, yes. uh, "My advisor uh -huh. said, okay, why don't you work out a theory of uh -huh. something okay. that's been happening in the lab? And, and it turned out uh, I worked it out and okay. published a paper and uh, won this award for that okay. paper. <laughs> what was the paper about? Uh, well, so the it was about how atoms emit light. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, atoms emit light by electrons moving from one place in the atom to another place. Okay. Uh, but some, but if you take an atom and put it in a in a very small box, uh -huh. uh, it can change the way atoms emit light. Okay. And so that was what my uh -huh. My work was about how does the presence of this box change the okay. way atoms emit light. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, it's you know at that time it was a in interesting unsolved problem. And mm -hmm. Today it's you know much more complicated things have been done. Of and, but uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you went to Harvard after that. Right. And did yeah. your PhD there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, what was that like? 
<laughs> oh well, that was uh, you know it's a small class of students, and uh, all, you know all of my classmates were uh, incredible. I learned an incredible uh -huh. deal, from, a lot from them, <laughs> uh -huh. and. Uh, and was opened up to many, many different aspects of physics. Okay, okay. <laughs> and the things I learned in those days are, you know, with me today too. And, okay. uh, and it's a great privilege to be back in the department now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and teaching this, you know, students like me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Harvard was followed by your postdoc in uh, Bell Labs, and then you were at Yale for 18 years, right? Correct, yes. How was the Yale experience? Uh, well, uh, so Yale is a bit of a smaller place than Harvard or MIT, mm -hmm. and uh, but they gave me a very nice environment with some good colleagues, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, I spent uh, many years uh, working on on some topics that were interest to me, mm -hmm. uh, and nobody mm -hmm. really cared about it very much. <laughs> <laughs> but now, mm -hmm. 20 years later, some uh -huh. of the, the papers I wrote at Yale are now, okay. you know, become very popular, mm -hmm. and everyone's working on those mm -hmm. topics. So. It was good to have a, an experience where, you know, I had not everybody was looking at exactly what I was doing. I, I had a time to develop my own ideas. Uh -huh. Of course, at Yale also, uh, my two daughters were born. Yes, yes, we're gonna. <laughs> and uh, so they grew up in New Haven, and uh, okay. so we have very fond memories, my wife Usha right. and I, right. of our time at Yale. Right, <laughs> I was uh, uh, reading that, um, mm -hmm. you know, of course, when um, Harvard invited you to join them, I think in 2005, it was, uh, it's a lot of Indians dream to go to Harvard, and I think your family must have been very excited and uh, oh. a bit persuasive, or it was all your idea to come to Harvard? <laughs> well, uh, so, of course, it's uh, it's everybody's dream to get an offer at yes. Harvard, uh, and uh, and Harvard is a very exciting place to do physics. Uh -huh. But, yeah, we were reasonably well settled, and, uh, and my daughters naturally uh, didn't want to leave their friends and uh -huh. start a new life. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, my wife and my... Mm -hmm. I think parents all, all advised me that this was an opportunity I couldn't pass up, and I, yeah. I agreed with that, of course. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and my, my children, my girls, were initially, you know, not, well, it was hard for them, but, sure. but within a few months, they were settled delighted down. and settled down with new so, lives. Yeah. So how did you meet your wife, Usha? <laughs> <laughs> so we met uh, when we were both students at Harvard. Okay. Uh, I went one evening to... Uh, what's called Uduki Maze. They, uh, they had a table at Elliot uh -huh. House okay. where you know you can have dinner and uh, but you have to speak uh -huh. in Hindi uh, or Urdu with people at the table. So, you Urdu at the table? Hindi can speak Hindi. Hindi is a little bit. So, Hindi is a little bit. Hindi is a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, right. Where, where, where. So, she was sitting in front of me. Okay, nice. <laughs> Do you watch Big Bang Theory? I've seen it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we all got interested in physics. Yeah, yeah, so uh, they have, okay. uh, you know, I know people like those uh -huh. characters. Uh, well, the, the, I think there's no one exactly like them. The, uh -huh. I think the characters in the, uh, in the show are, are composites. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but it's, it's Do sometimes... Do you know any Sheldons? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I do. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, there there are people with some of Sheldon's traits. I okay. mean, but in the show, of course, Sheldon seems to know everything, everything. about every field of physics. Okay. That's true. There's no one like that. No, no. <laughs> no, your your work is so high level, so advanced that. Even, I mean, uh, it's hard <laughs> to understand. I even read the Times of India article recently. <laughs> now, how do you explain uh, your work as super specialized as it is to simple people or lay people or even, you know, Amjanta who watches <laughs> this uh, show? Tell us about your work. Uh, sure. Well, you know, it's not that complicated, you know, <laughs> given an hour, I think you can yes. explain it to <laughs> everyone, we but have, we, we so don't have an hour, us. but, uh -huh. uh, you know, so everyone's heard of uh, Newton's laws of motion, uh, right. how they describe the uh -huh. motion of the planets, right. Right. Uh, right. Right. Earth around the sun. Uh -huh. uh, but now we go to much smaller scales. If you uh -huh. take a simple hydrogen mm -hmm. atom, mm -hmm. uh, then that has an electron moving around okay. a proton. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first guess would be the same equation that describe the Earth also describe the electron. Okay. Uh, that turns out not to be true. We need an okay. update to Newton's laws, and that's called the theory of quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, discovered in the early 1920s, late okay. 1920s. Um, 
And you may have heard of something called the uncertainty principle. Yes, yes. Uh, which is how uh, you can't determine both the position and mm -hmm. the velocity of an electron at the same time. So that's one of the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics. Okay. And, and through that theory, you know, we have now a complete understanding of, say, the hydrogen atom for sure. Okay. But now we want to go to a more complicated system. Right. No, not take one electron, uh -huh. take two or three and really infinite numbers okay. and ask what happens. Okay. Uh, so this is important for, you know, determining properties of uh, ma materials. So, you know, you ask a question, why is this, uh, you know, why does this, uh, this cup shiny or okay. why does a uh -huh. piece of metal conduct electricity and okay. why is some material a magnet? Uh -huh. So these are all fundamental questions uh, which can be answered by the same science of quantum mechanics. And, mm -hmm. and what I work on is, uh, is translating the fundamental principles to okay. properties of matter. <laughs> and so there's one, uh, another idea that comes up when you go from one to infinity, uh -huh. uh, which is the idea of entanglement. Okay. So, so electrons mm -hmm. can entangle with each okay. other quantum mechanically, which means okay. that if you look at one, you uh -huh. immediately change the state of the other. Okay. So okay. this is a, another very surprising feature of our, our world, okay. which is in fact been verified many times by experiments. Okay. And uh, so some of my contributions have been to understand how entanglement can influence okay. properties of matter. Okay. Uh, you know, and these are materials that could be of practical use. And okay. uh, in the past, there have been many materials that people in my field have studied that have been of, okay. of great use in, in in making your iPhone, for example. <laughs> but I don't work on okay. that directly. I'm working okay. on some other set of materials, and one can dream that someday uh, okay. these, uh, these theoretical ideas will help make mm -hmm. uh, materials with interesting and useful properties. Okay. Sometimes people, uh, <laughs> you know, we read in the news, there are a mm -hmm. lot of claims made that a lot mm -hmm. of work in quantum physics has also been done in India, you know, hundreds of years ago, and of course some recent. Has yeah. there been any exciting research in India? Oh, there is a lot of exciting okay. research in India. I mean, so in the uh, in in the 1930s, there okay. were of course there are two famous uh, Indian physicists, uh, Bose and Raman. Uh -huh. uh, Raman won the Nobel Prize. Bose didn't, mm -hmm. uh, and they made absolutely fundamental contributions to mm -hmm. the very basic theory uh -huh. of uh, quantum mechanics. Okay. Uh, Raman actually did some experiments. Uh -huh. uh, um, so, and today there are many, many people in my field uh, working in all across India and I, I often uh -huh. go to conferences and discuss okay. with them. Okay. Uh, but if you go back to ancient times, uh -huh. I mean, I would say um, there have been many fundamental contributions mm -hmm. by Indian scientists and mathematicians. Right. Uh, you know, for example, there's a scientist called, a uh, mathematician known as Madhava, who mm -hmm. in the 12th and 13th century already had advanced trigonometry and also had some understanding of mm -hmm. basic calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these things were rediscovered in the West mm -hmm. uh, okay. 200 years later by Newton and others. Uh, and these things are, uh, the unfortunate thing is many of these things are not known to Indians yeah. today. Uh, but on the other hand, there are a lot of claims about, you know, airplanes in ancient right. India, which are just t totally false. Oh. They, you know, okay. so I think it's important to stick to the to the truth, uh -huh. and and there's, uh, and if you stick to actual accomplishments, there's a lot uh -huh. to be proud of in right. ancient India. <laughs> okay. Do you, uh, you know, you do so much work in theoretical physics. Is there any vision that you have that some of the work that you do could mm. be? Uh, in you know, could be applicable in future. <laughs> uh, well, one can hope. I mean, uh, uh, there's been many mm -hmm. examples, and uh, mm -hmm. even in recent history, where mm -hmm. you know pu mm -hmm. things that seem very theoretical mm -hmm. and abstract uh -huh. suddenly found an application. So mm -hmm. uh, these days, many people are trying to mm -hmm. use uh, quantum mechanics to build quantum computers. I mean, all, okay. but they could be mm -hmm. other more subtle uh, other applications of quantum mm -hmm. mechanics related to quantum computing, mm -hmm. say in quantum uh, cryptography or, or okay. detecting molecules or creating new types of uh, chemicals and so on. Uh, and, uh, and the ideas that are in these fields are very much related to the ideas that I work on. Uh, okay. So maybe mm -hmm. some of my work will have an impact. <laughs> we'll <Okay>. see. <laughs> Talking of learning, people yes. who want to learn uh, mm -hmm. more about your work, let's uh, tell them about your books. 
Um, sure. So there are two books here. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a book I wrote about 15 mm -hmm. years ago, Quantum Phase Transitions. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is about uh, what happens to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lots of, you know, if you have many, many electrons in mm -hmm. some quantum state, mm -hmm. uh, then as you change, say, the pressure on them or their temperature, uh -huh. uh, they can undergo transformations to new states. Okay. Uh, you know, okay. a simple example is mm -hmm. water boiling to steam, but um, uh -huh. that's, uh, you know, very simple, just understood by the the temperature making the, the molecules move faster. Okay. Uh, but quantum mechanically, there can also be phase transformations, which are much more subtle and involve changes in the entanglement of the okay. electrons. Okay. So that's what this book is about. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the second book, uh, actually written by uh, two of my younger colleagues uh, who uh -huh. were at Harvard, uh, okay. Sean Hartnell, mm -hmm. who's now a professor at Stanford, and Andy Lucas, who's now a professor in uh, Colorado. Okay. Uh, and this is about really a whole new field that uh, started about 10 years ago, and which I was involved in, mm -hmm. uh, which connects the properties of electrons in matter okay. to the properties of black holes, if okay. you can believe it. <laughs> so there's a rather remarkable and deep connection between the nature of entanglement of mm -hmm. electrons in certain mm -hmm. states of matter mm -hmm. uh, and what happens to matter near the horizon of a black hole. Okay. For those of us who don't understand, I have read a little bit about it. <laughs> Tell us about this black hole. <laughs> right. So a black hole is a you know very very dense star, okay. and it's so dense that uh, if light uh, goes out of the star, it gets it comes back right in. It can't mm -hmm. escape. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are lots of black holes out there uh -huh. uh, in in the universe, and okay. including in our own galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, so so this was. So these are such big objects, and it would okay. think that you could describe them like other big objects just uh -huh. by the, without quantum mechanics. Okay. And that's largely mm -hmm. true, but uh, one of Stephen Hawking's great mm -hmm. contributions was to understand that quantum mechanics actually has a very strong consequence in some aspects of black holes. Okay. So okay. he realized that black holes are, um, have entropy, which is, <laughs> which is that there is some randomness associated with the, with the surface of a black hole due yeah. to quantum uncertainty applying to the surface of a black hole. Wow. Uh, and, uh, but then he noticed that there were also certain contradictions in this when you brought quantum mechanics to a black hole. And, okay. and these contradictions have been driving research in physics for the longest time okay. since his discovery in the 70s. Uh, I wasn't working in this field at all. I was just working, you know, in my, with my electrons in my little okay. materials here. Uh, but amazingly, it turned out there was a connection between the kind of quantum uh, fluctuations that happen with electrons in, a, in materials to do the fluctuations that happen on the horizon of a black hole. Okay. <laughs> Very intriguing. <laughs> yeah, so this was a, you know, this okay. general connection came up out of string theory first. Okay. Uh, but then in recent years, in fact, some of the things I was working in, in Yale uh, have, mm -hmm. and something now people call the SYK model, okay. uh, but, and the S. Uh -huh. Although Usha <laughs> says it should be called the PSYK model because her last name is Pasi. <laughs> yeah, well, she gave me some inspiration okay. anyway. <laughs> anyway, so the SYK model turns out to be a model not, not, not just of electrons and matter, but also of some very simple types of black holes. Okay. Okay. And, and this cross-fertilization between two fields has you know, really uh, become a very active area of research. It's okay. what this book is about, and it's, okay. I think, a, a big part of why I won the Dirac Medal. Absolutely, <laughs> and we hope that uh, you don't stop there, and one day you get Nobel Prize. <laughs> but before you get to that, uh, we as a community are very proud of you, and we are, it's such a privilege for us to uh, honor you at New England Choice Awards. We're looking forward to honor you on October 26th. So thank you so much. You're very thank kind. You. Thank you.